This video is sponsored by B&H. More on them in a bit. All right, back when the M1 Max MacBook Pro was announced, I immediately ordered one. It was definitely needed as my current machine at the time was not cut out for big edits and I was traveling a ton back then. So a laptop just made sense. It's crazy now talking about the M1 Max MacBook Pro that the M5 chips are out now. But anyways, I use that computer daily for everything. Editing, travel, client meetings, emails, you name it, taxes, everything. So it's been a great computer, but it was time to upgrade and I decided to go with the Mac Studio this time, something a little bit more powerful than a laptop. And I specifically went for the M3 Ultra Mac Studio, and you can see the specs listed here. And let me tell you, going from the M1 Max MacBook Pro to this is a crazy leap in performance. Now I'll be doing another video where you know I show uh, the different video formats that I use and kind of scrub through the timeline and color grades and, and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. Uh, in this video, what I wanna do is I just wanna kinda cover my reasons and my thought process, uh, why I specifically went with the Mac Studio. So why the Mac Studio? Well, firstly, I wanted a desktop that I could just mount under my desk and honestly not have to see it, just kinda of clean up my desk. Since my MacBook was my only computer, I was constantly docking and undocking the computer monitor and docking station and everything. And honestly, it was just kind of a pain, especially when I was working on an edit off my server and I disconnected the, or undocked the laptop. When I would go back to, to redock it, uh, the connection from the server was disconnected somehow. So I always had to relink and that was just kind of cumbersome. And so that part of the process, I just really didn't like, and I didn't want to have to continue docking and undocking. So I thought I have a laptop that, that works for daily tasks still. And for light edits, I wanted something that I could just dedicate to my workstation and just have it plugged in and ready to go all the time. So that was kind of one of the reasons why I went with the Mac Studio. But like I said, my MacBook is still perfectly fine for like meetings and emails, light editing and everyday tasks that I may, you know, want to do, need to do on the road while I'm traveling or in, if I'm just like out, and off, out of this office, you know, coffee shop or if I'm in town for meetings or whatever the case may be. Now, the other reason is Mac Studios are just going to offer more in terms of performance than their MacBook Pro counterpart, obviously depending on the configuration. And in this configuration, this is definitely more powerful than my, my M1 Max MacBook Pro and honestly, the other like M4 Max MacBook Pros for that matter. And as another bonus, since I don't need to dock and undock. It just keeps my workspace much cleaner. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but it just keeps my workspace much cleaner, or at least it gives me the opportunity to have a much cleaner workspace since I don't have to have the laptop sitting on, on my desk. And then another thing is the fact that it has the built in 10 gigabit ethernet port. That means I can just connect it straight to my network switch and not have to use a docking station for 10 gigabit ethernet. And that's just super helpful because I have a NAS and I prefer to run off the NAS and actually keep Wi-Fi off because that's a, usually a much faster internet connection. Now, before I go into why I went with the M3 Ultra chip specifically, I want to mention the sponsor of this video and that is B&H. B&H is, is where I get everything for, for my production needs. And B&H had the exact configuration that I wanted, which is... Like I mentioned in the specs, the base M3 Ultra Studio for pretty much and the upgraded internal storage because I like working from the internal drive for the best performance. So why go through B&H? Well, for me personally, like I said, it's where I do all of my shopping for my production needs. And I mean, I, and it's not just computers, but everything from this Mac Studio to monitors to the NAS that I have to cameras, lighting, you name it, they have it all and their shipping is really fast. And something that I don't think a lot of people look at is the use department. You actually can get some pretty good deals uh, through the use department, which I've I've used quite a bit in the past and it definitely saves saves some money. And if you have the Payboo, uh, the B&H Payboo credit card, you actually save quite a bit of money on taxes, which adds up on big purchases like a computer or camera or something like that. So if you're thinking of picking up any gear, 
definitely give BNH a look. Links in the description and all that kind of good stuff. Big thanks to BNH for supporting this channel and making this content possible. Okay. So why did I go with the M3 Ultra instead of the M4 Max? Well, based on my research, the M3 Ultra was frankly just better suited for me for two main reasons. Better performance in DaVinci Resolve and better I.O. than the M4 Max Studio. Now, I'm not going to dwell on the specifics of the M3 Ultra versus the M4 Max performance differences uh, simply because M chips are always being updated and there's already quite a bit of content out there on this. But the big takeaway for this, when I did my research for my specific needs, and it just the, the M3 Ultra was honestly just better equipped for editing raw video, especially 6, 8, 12, even 17K raw footage and DaVinci Resolve. The M3 Ultra was just better suited for that. And that's really important because that's where I do most of my editing is in DaVinci Resolve, or most, all of my editing is in DaVinci Resolve. So the M3 Ultra for me was, specifically for my needs, was just better suited than the M4 Max based on my own research. And what's funny is, you know, I, I, I like a lot of people go out and watch reviews on, on stuff before, you know, going out to, to get something. And pretty much all the reviews said the M4 Max is a better computer in most cases, except for when it got to DaVinci Resolve. That's when the M3 Ultra performed the best. And well, since that's what I spend most of my life in when I'm sitting here at this desk, I wanted something that performed the best in DaVinci Resolve. And of course, that's like in this specific point in time, because it's the M3 Ultra. In a year, there could be the M5 Ultra and M5 Max Max Studio, maybe. I don't know. I don't really keep up with Apple rumor stuff. But the point is, doing the research to find out what's most important for your specific workflow is super important, because reviews and all that stuff will say one thing, but if the review doesn't touch on what your specific needs are, then that's not going to be really helpful, even if they suggest one computer or something over the other. Okay, so there is uh, there are a couple more reasons. Now, the other reason is, and this is a small thing that I admit, but uh, the M3 Ultra actually has all Thunderbolt 5 ports, whereas the, the M4 Max's, I think the front USB ports are not Thunderbolt 5. And to me, it's just one of those things where like, I'd rather have as much future-proofed hardware as possible and I, I i think it's silly that the m4 max decided to not have thunderbolt 5 ports on the front or maybe it's two in the back i can't really remember so how does the computer perform well like i said i'm going to make a separate video covering playback and renders of some old projects and maybe even just compare it to my m1 max because that's that's all i have i don't have like a gajillion dollars to like buy a bunch of computers to test uh, but I, I think I'm in a same, similar camp as a lot of people where, you know, we, we don't upgrade computers every single year. We upgrade computers when we need. Maybe it's every three, four, five years. And for me, it's coming up on four or five years or something like that. So um, that's what I'm going to do is kind of compare it to my older machine just to kind of show you the performance improvements. So like I said, if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed and be on the lookout for that video. But what I can say is in the like about two weeks that I've had to com the computer, the performance improvement is just insane. You know, so after like getting it all set up and transferring everything over and, you know, downloading apps and logging and all that kind of crap, uh, I immediately opened up Resolve and started playing around in an old project. And I just couldn't believe how fast it was. Like it it's, it's the feeling of like, this no longer like gets in the way. Like I'm not, I'm not like waiting on the computer. So like plugins like Dehancer, which are like always hyper intense on the computer and just really demanding played back completely fine in, you know, 6k raw R3D and black magic raw with, without any playback at full resolution, which is crazy. And to me, like that's, I think what's most important for, for me as not only as a creative, but as a business owner is I, th that was one thing that the, my, my laptop was starting to do is like the technology, when it starts getting in the way of creativity, that's when for me, like that cost me 
time, which cost me money. And I want to get projects done as quickly as possible to get it back to my clients and get started on new projects. And so when things start getting in the way of creativity and, you know, like just waiting on things to render or playback, dropping frames and, and all that stuff, that's when for me, it's like, okay, now, now it's time to, to upgrade, to find a different solution because like, I don't like waiting on my computer if I don't have to. And like, I could like, you know, do proxies and everything like that. But, uh, but, but for me, like, I, you know, I just, I just kind of want to like not have to deal with that workflow if I don't have to. So that's, that's, that's kind of like my, that was like my very first impression of, of his computer is like, holy smokes, this thing is so fast. It's, it's so crazy. Anyways. So should you get one? Well, I, that to totally depends on, on your needs. Like, I'm not going to recommend to you any specific configuration because I don't know your workflow and anyone that, that is recommending a specific configuration, I probably wouldn't take their advice, uh, unless their video answered specifically all of your specific needs. But for me, the M3 ultra definitely made the most sense. You know, of course, Apple updates their computers fairly consistently, it seems. So just like figure out what specs are important to you. And like, you know, if you're not looking to upgrade the computer now, but the M3 ultra is like, okay, that might be something that, you know, I would, I would want to have in the future. Wait for like the M4 ultra or M5 ultra or whatever is like in the pipeline that fits your specific needs. Like, start budgeting and, and putting money aside so that, you know, when it comes time, you'll, you'll have the cash for it. The other piece of advice that I would give, like when getting a computer, and I did this with my M1 max MacBook pro as well is spec it out as high as you possibly can to future proof it. That's exactly like that. That's kind of been my ethos always is I don't upgrade computers very often. And I would imagine a lot of a lot of you out there don't upgrade computers very often unless you're like a specific YouTube channel that reviews computers. So what I would recommend if you can is spec it out as as much as you can, because that'll just kind of future proof future proof you for for the long run. And that might squeeze out another year or two without having the need to to upgrade. So uh, that's just, that's just my advice. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to tell you what computer to go get, but that's kind of been my thought process and yeah, it's, it's your money. So like totally do whatever you want to do. But, um, obviously if you're, you know, doing this for a living, like, like I am, you know, make sure that you're finding the machine that is going to best suit your needs for not only right now, but look in, you know, two, three, four years in the future. And I truly believe that the machine that I have will definitely serve me for many years to come. So thank you for watching. That's all I have for you on this one. And I uh, appreciate you stopping by. I'll see you down in the comments and hopefully you'll stop by for the next video. Peace.